Hey, what's going on guys? It's Chris. I'm out here. Just want to show you. I'm here in New York City. I'm in Brooklyn right now. I came out here on business. Um, just uh, one for a conference too for a couple different meetings. But, um, you know, this brings to mind a couple of different things. Um, you know, whenever we travel, we tend to put our fitness to the side for a little bit. And um, that can be worrisome for a lot of people, right? Um, for me in particular, it gets to my system and when I travel I'm actually more likely to have an ulcerative, ulcerative colitis flare up. The other thing is I'm out here on business, I'm, I'm not here on pleasure so I've got to keep myself, i got to keep my mind sharp, I've got to you know, feel good, i got to feel my best right? because I'm talking to people, I'm trying to put my best foot forward for everybody um, and so I want to be my best, I want to have my mind sharp, I don't want to be tired all the time so I am worried about jet lag, I'm, I'm three, four hours um, three hours ahead of time from where I live in California out here. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of my meetings out here are in the morning. I don't want to be half asleep when I walk into a meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, out here because it's still 5 a.m. in California. So these are things to consider. Now, I follow a few different rules. Uh, I travel quite a bit from coast to coast. I've been traveling abroad a lot lately. So whenever I am on a flight that's more than eight hours, I have a few different rules that I follow. Um, and the importance of these rules are for a couple different reasons. One, uh, to keep my circ circadian rhythm in order so that I'm not experiencing jet lag like crazy, so that I'm not, you know, so that I am really good for my meetings and I'm able to do what I want to do. Two, um, because, uh, like I said, I'm more likely to get a flare up when I travel. Um, and I think that has something to do with uh, the amount of stress that I go through, the, the inflammatory levels and things like that. So I really want to make sure that I'm watching out for my inflammatory levels. And, and uh, another thing that tends to happen to me when I'm not watching all this stuff is I get sick. You know, when I came back from Brazil this summer, I ended up getting seriously sick after the flight. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with being in a tin can for, you know, 12, 14, 15 hours at a time. Um, so really want to make sure that you know, I'm, I'm on top of things. And so regardless of what I'm doing or where I'm going, I always do these things. Number one, I always fast for at least 12 hours prior to the flight, right? And I know that sounds crazy and, and some of you are like, well, 12 hours prior to the flight. And the reason I do that is because I don't want any insulin in my system when I'm getting on the flight. Um, I, I don't, you know, the other thing that happens is when you're flying, you tend to retain a lot of water. So this tends to offset retaining a bunch of water and things like that. This also helps me to actually uh, sleep on the flight if it's an overnight flight. Say I'm catching a red eye somewhere. So um, I'll fast prior to getting on the plane or anything like that and uh, that'll actually help me to, to, to get to sleep a little bit easier. So I'll do that. Um, the other thing is I stay hydrated. I stay hydrated as possible leading up to the plane ride and I try to stay hydrated on the plane ride. Uh, I also avoid caffeine when I'm about to get on a plane. And again, it's because I want to try and get some sleep in. Um, I want to be energized when I'm getting off the plane. I don't want, uh, I don't want to be sitting there you know, just trying to stay awake because most of the time I don't have internet access on the flight. Anyways, I can't get any work done. Um, if I'm if I am working on a book or something like that, I will get some writing done. But most of the time, I'm trying to sleep on a flight because when I hit the ground, it's action time and I got to do some stuff. Um, and then when I get to my destination. Um, there's a bunch of things that I really try to do. You know, a lot of people, they travel, they put their workouts to the side. They don't try to train. Um, me, regardless of where I am or whether I have access to a gym, I'm training. Like this morning, I didn't have access to a gym. Uh, I had to be uh, to an early morning meeting this morning, so I didn't have time to get to a gym to actually get a guest pass. So I did 100 burpees prior to coming to the meeting, you know, 100 burpees, showered, and then came to the meeting. Obviously, I want to shower after doing 100 burpees, but, um, you know, getting some calisthenics in, even when you can't train at a gym, is huge. You know, it'll make you feel better, it'll uh, level out your blood sugar if you've eaten something or anything like that, and, and uh, it'll help you out a lot. The other thing is, I'm super strict keto when I'm traveling. So, um, you know, I'm in New York City, of course, you know, the, 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 Italian in me wants to go get some pizza. I want to go get some pasta. There's all this food that I absolutely love. Um, 
and uh, of course, you know, if you're there for a while, you want to get out there and enjoy yourself. And I'm going to be visiting family after this. I'm going to see my mom. Um, and yeah, I'll probably have a meal or two where I'm going to have some pasta. I'm going to have some of her meatballs. I'm going to have a bunch of stuff. But other than that, you know, I don't want to be loading up on pizza and all kinds of crap because I know that if I'm cheating every single day and I'm cheating two or three times a day, that's going to lead to a flare up down the line. So um, what I try to do, especially out here in, in New York, you know, I'm sticking to um, drinking kombucha, um, you know, having a little bit of coffee and I'm sticking to salads with a good amount of olive oil and some some vinegar on them and things like that maybe a bit of chicken some nuts and things and things like that but mostly meat and vegetables while i'm out and about and so those are my rules for traveling they're mine they work for me they may or may not work for you but I, i'm just giving you what i do and my reasoning for doing it um so i hope you're well um for those of you who are interested we're we've released keto camp and we just released a new package on keto camp the keto camp master package where matt and i are going to actually personally work for you work with you and um if you want you check that out or your soul ketocamp.com there's so much packed into that course 130 page book we've got uh, now we've got our initial consultations and three monthly check-ins uh, we got a full course there a 30 recipe cookbook that includes keto desserts um, we've got a 12-week training program in there I mean this thing is stacked and it's at a great price so check it out if you want and until next time I'll be getting you some more awesome content very soon